Franciscan saints from time to time, and maybe those of you who are not Franciscan or not familiar with our central calendar, that is our calendar of the saints, find it annoying that here you prepared the readings for the mass readings for the day to get something else. But I think um, every saint has something special to teach us and to impart to us. And so I want to share with you what St. Leonard of Port Morris um, has uh, to share with us. He's actually quite important and a very impressive saint. Um, he died in 1751. I think he was born in 1676, if I got that right. And um, I'm going to just share with you, this is a little bio from the Magnificat. Um, he was the son of a mariner, um, or mariner, excuse me, um, for Porto Marizio, so Port Morris. Uh, he studied as a boy at a Jesuit college in Rome, so... <laughs> You know, Jesuit studies, but he became a friar. Um, and um, the, friar, the, the friars won his allegiance, and he took the habit of the Riformella, a strict reform branch of the Franciscans in 1697. He planned to go to China, like others, like um, Mother Cabrini. Uh, but, in, but tuberculosis intervened, and once he recovered, he was sent to revive um, San Francesco de Monte, Monte Abbey in Florence. And under his influence, the house grew and flourished, watered at least in part by his preaching ministry, first in Tuscany and later with the Pope's incursion throughout all of Italy. So he traversed almost most of the peninsular boot that is Italy. The strict penances Leonard laid upon himself seemed to bear direct fruit in the hearts of his listeners, who converted in considerable numbers. He promoted several devotions. He advocated for the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament and devotion to the Sacred Heart, so at, at this early time. He was a strong proponent of Mary's Immaculate Conception a century before it was proclaimed a dogma, that being in the Franciscan tradition. It was very strong in our tradition. But the spread of the Stations of the Cross was his greatest work. Um, and I'm happy to say uh, some kind benefactors um, or a couple has paid off the rest of our stations from Bethlehem, our indoor stations. There's still the outdoor stations, but I won't bring that up today. Um, the spread of the stations of the cross was his greatest work. He personally erected over 500 stations of the cross during his missions in Italy. And by that, I think what they mean is, like the, the, the 14 stations, that counts as one, not 14, right? So 500 ways of the cross. Um, install, including the installation in the Roman Colosseum, of all places. 
Rome was the site of Leonard's last mission. He died there on this date in 1751. What a, what a wonderful saying. And he spent a lot of time in prayer and, um, as we heard, in penances. So um, we heard in our first reading from Ephesians, this beautiful reading, that we are meant to be blameless and holy in God's sight. Man, that's hard to do. So much conspires against that in our culture. Um, you know, thought, word, and deed. And so we have to keep coming to the Lord Jesus, keep being washed in His blood by holy, the Holy Eucharist and penance, you know, confession. Um, we have to keep coming to the Immaculate Heart of Mary for spiritual protection against all the things that lower our standards. The devil wants us, he doesn't have to, you know, get us to be satanic. He just wants us to lower our standards, to be brainwashed into accepting the lower standards of our society, which in many ways are almost no standards at all as pansexualism is spreading. I was reading a recent article on Sweden, how the socialist government in the 50s basically um, eviscerated the Lutheran roots of Sweden, because Sweden was Lutheran, um, and into a kind of a, a sexual liberation utopia. And by 1970, everybody accepted now what is the norm in Sweden, you know, there's kind of no morals in some ways. Um, they had Christian roots, but the, the government got rid of it in an attempt to have a guilt-free, um, you know, kind of open life. But the weird thing is, is at the same time that was happening, there was spread of um, psychological uh, illness, mental illness, especially among young girls. Because the sex education that they mandated basically turned young boys into predators and girls became the victims. It's horrible. Um, and, and so, you know, it, this, this kind of false utopia comes at a horrible cost. And um, it's our job to reclaim culture and society, uh, Sweden is one example, but we're fighting it in our own country, uh, to keep the Christian roots still there and the influence. Our, our Lord is very blunt today that we have to, there's no easy way to do it. You have to carry your cross. We have to engage in some penances, uh, not just prayer, because as St. Therese, the little flower said, it's more through suffering than homilies and sermons that people are converted. And that's what we heard of St. Leonard. It was his penances that he did before parish mission that converted souls during the parish mission. So, um, and the prayer, of course, too, but we have to keep that in mind. I want to read you an excerpt from his writings in the uh, Franciscan Office of Readings about the Stations of the Cross. Is there a remedy for the evils of our day, where people neglect their duties and all sorts of vices? Indeed, there is. I should like to explain on bended knee to all prelates, pastors, priests, and other ministers of God that this remedy is at hand, at least in great part the devout exercise of the way of the cross. If by their zeal and care this devotion spreads through individual parishes and churches, it will indeed be a powerful protection against the surging tide of vice and fill all with the greatest blessings of virtue who engage in loving reflection on the sufferings and love of Jesus Christ. I think we all know the experience that you have dangling in your mind some kind of temptation, any kind, but in particular of the flesh, because that's, and then you have, you're reminded of Jesus' suffering. It's like, how could he even think that? He had so many scourges and cuts and bruises, a smashed nose, black eyes, um, you know, missing teeth, um, you know, long thorns stuck in his skull. I mean, hands pierced, fierce pierced, feet pierced. I mean, you know, if you believe St. Bridget of Sweden, he was hit over 5,400 times. He became the devil's punching bag. He became like, you know, hamburger meat in a way. This is our Lord, the second person of the Trinity. And then when we're reminded of that, and I, I like to tell people, read John 18 and 19. John's account of the passion, our thorn-crowned king, or we just heard this Sunday from Luke's gospel, you know, him, Jesus, hanging on the cross. And then we're like ashamed that we've been tempted by these things. So it is a purifying antidote to the, um, the spirit of the age and unclean spirits. Continuing, what solitary insights 
Will the continued meditation on the bitter passion of the Son of God stir up in the soul? Daily experience has taught me that by this devout form of prayer, men's lives are quickly changed for the better. For the way of the cross is the antidote for vice, the cleansing of unbridled desires and an effective incentive to virtue and holiness of life. Indeed, if we set the excruciating sufferings of the Son of God portrayed in so many vivid pictures before the eyes of the soul, we can hardly refrain from abhorring the defilement of our own life because of the abundant light that fills our souls. So, you know, in, in his day, they didn't have Mel Gibson's movie, the, um, you know, The Passion. Um, they just had their own imagination, and maybe they, you know, being in a, a culture where they didn't have guns yet, they saw the results of bloody battles and violence, so maybe they had that. Um, we have movies like The Passion to remind us how horrible were the sufferings of the Son of God. So, let's remember that the Holy Eucharist is both the glorified but also the crucified flesh of Christ. And that we need to meditate on the Passion, um, you know, with some regularity. Call it to mind. And when you're tempted, whether it's sins of the flesh or other things, pride, vanity, whatever, God was not too proud to be looked down as abhorrent by his sufferings. He was not too proud to be poor. So who are we to be vain, avaricious, and all that? So keep the passion always before your eyes, and that'll make you a truly authentic Christian, and I think have more of a supernatural influence on souls. St. Leonard of Port Morris, pray, pray for us. us. Our Lady of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray, pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus.